All right, let's take a look at gender. I have been working on this one joke for about two years now. It's my snap joke, but it's been expanding and expanding. And, you know, with all the talk in the news about gender and whatnot, and uh, I just wanted to analyze it. I just wanted to take one section of my Why Didn't They Laugh podcast and analyze why did they laugh and and what we can learn from that. And I can learn from that because the thing about comedy and the reason it's so terrifying to dictators and people that want to suppress the freedoms of individuals is because you can't lie. When someone laughs, it reveals that it's real. It's It's really one of those things that you can't control. And that's what you can't Propaganda doesn't affect comedy. It's almost like it has this shield. And that's why comedians, the, the political correct movement is so anti-comedy. Because they don't want to control, they want us controlled. But it's not possible. Ha 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 Because people just laugh. It's like coming. You stroke a wiener or a clitoris enough, people are going to start coming. I don't care what government you have in place. All right, so let's check out this beginning. Uh, I like being married, it's fun, it's a good time. But um, I've learned something, you don't know a woman until you marry her, and then you watch her watch the show Snapped on the Oxygen Channel. <laughs> it's a whole genre, you may not have seen Snap, but you may have seen Wives with Knives, or any of these other, yeah. Or any of these w other wonderful programs about real life women who murder their real life man. And, uh, you know, it's narrated by a woman with an oddly understanding tone. And, uh. Alright, so, so far, the reason I love talking about Snap and why I use that as an example is because it's pretty undeniably. Like. When you're watching it, when women watch it, especially, they, they have this feeling of like almost empowerment where they're rooting for a killer. And, uh, and it's based on gender. Like Snapped is only women murdering men. Like you can't imagine a show of just men murdering women and having anyone possibly root for the killer. So you see these women start laughing because it's almost like when you're caught watching porno where the guise of sanity is being removed where there's no way you can really justify watching 15 of these in a row without admitting that they're pretty, pretty rough. All right, let's continue. You know, they always take a hard turn. It's like Tina had to move to a new town because Brian got a job and she missed her mother. So she got into online gambling and then shot him in the head while he was asleep. And I'm like, Jesus. And I look at my wife to like laugh, and she's like, that's what happens. <laughs> I'm like, that's the first real big laugh because people are assuming I'm just gonna mock mock the women and not uh, be on this be in it, you know? So when I show that my wife does the same thing, it's both funny and a relief. There's a catharsis to it. And um Women do have a way of justifying their insane behavior, and men usually lie about their insane behavior. And I noticed that twice uh, in my relationship and marriage. One time, Amy and I were discussing a 13-year-old boy that had been raped by his 35-year-old female teacher. And she said that the kid should pay child support. And I remember being like, what the fuck? Dude, if a woman's raped, all bets are off. Like, she can literally just go shoot up a bank and everyone would be like, oh, she's, you know, she's in a lot of pain. But, like, a 13-year-old boy, that's still statutory rape. And I know it's not the same because it's just whatever's putting in has an easier time than getting put in. I get that, like, it's not the same. Like, a 35-year-old man and a 13-year-old girl is infinitely creepier but it still has massive psychological trauma on the young boy. And uh, to then put him in economic peril. Okay. And then the other example, the other thing I wanted to discuss with that was, uh, damn, I can't remember. Oh yeah, the show Cheaters. Where whenever, whenever they catch a cheater, they, the guy is always like, it's not my dick. No, 
It's not my dick, that's another guy's dick. And women are like, if you weren't always at work, I wouldn't have to fuck your brother. And it's just, a, it's pretty, it seems fairly universal. So that's why I think that got a laugh. So let's continue. You think that's a valid kill? But the dude just moved. And she's like, she missed her mom. Like, do you not love your mom? And I'm like, so, fear runs down my spine. Okay, that little thing about she loved her mom, do you not love her mom? That's called a straw man argument, which you see in politics all the time. Where, if you're pro-guns, people will say, oh, so you think it's cool that little kids get shot at school? You know, it's, it's, it's a basic fallacy that, you know, for most of human existence, ever since Plato, you got to kind of follow these rules, but now all bets are off. Where if you... You know, if you like Hillary Clinton, you hate the troops. If you like Trump, you support rape. You know, it's it's called a straw man. And so this is an example of your wife giving you a straw man where it's like, you think a murder's crazy. And now she's saying, oh, so that means you don't love your mother. So it's best to not argue those points because you can't win. Because once you start arguing that you love your mother, you concede a little bit. You know, so... Yeah, so now we're at this point. If, that, if she sees that that's okay, I'm screwed, you know? So I can quickly figure out how to not die. And there's nothing like a threat that makes you learn. Because I love my wife. I'm going to be with her for the rest of my life. But I also like life. I don't want to stay on the planet. I'm a big fan. So I can figure it out. Because uh, I now realize she is one of the greatest threats to, to me. Uh, and I think I cracked the code. Okay, so that section is just basically saying the human nature fact that you learn the fastest when there's a threat. You know, I, I used to do a bit about how Americans only speak one language. And I did this long thing with this French guy. He was like, how many languages do you speak? And I'm like, one, because you're speaking mine. Um, basically, I don't know how to make a canoe because I don't live on a river in the 16th century. So you can kind of skate through life sometimes in a relationship if you feel you're always okay. But when there's a little bit of that threat where you're like, oh man, I, so when she's mad at me, she might fucking end my life. That's when um, you really learn. And that's the meat of the joke is now. And this joke is about communication more than anything else. It's about conflict management. So check this out. I don't, I don't like this gender fighting. I never have. You know, it's like, you're stupid. No, you guys are stupid. It's like, we need each other, you know? Because men cannot make life, which is the closest thing to magic in this world. And women can't reach all the shelves. <laughs> and you know that. And you can think you're going to get a step stool, but you won't. So, you need us too. And you know we do. So let's work this thing out. When you're diving in this deep of water, which is, I am at this point, I'm, I'm about to say some pretty crazy stuff. It always helps to show how valuable uh, the people you're talking about are, shows humility, and be honest, which this is honest. Like, forming life in a womb, Elon Musk can't do that. Like, no one can do that. No, ma no man, the smartest man in the world with all the money in the world can't make life in a womb. Uh, you know, you can make a sheep, maybe, like a clone or some shit, uh, but it just isn't the same. So, and then the whole thing about the step stool, that actually has come from hecklers. Like one time I was like, and you can't reach all the shelves, which is funny in its innocence. And then one chick was like, I got a step stool. And I was like, no one believes you're going to go buy a step stool. You're not going to put that down on your list when you go to Target. You're just going to buy other stuff. Because you're just going to forget about it. And that was getting laughs, so I figured I'd cut him off at the pass. All right, let's keep going. And uh, I, I think everyone, I think people pretty much have good intentions and everything gets derailed by communication. And I figured it out. Men need orders. Specific, direct orders. We want to do stuff for you. That's why we're on the planet. That's why men are here. What do you want? I'll do it. Tell me. With very clear language. Directly what you want. And then I will do it. I will complete the task. Be specific. Like the, the repetition of be specific, it's, uh, it's, it's pulling a laugh out of them because it's foreshadowing. Where you see where I'm going with it, 
but me just saying those things aren't saying those things. Like I'm saying, it, you can tell it's a criticism of how vague women can be, but I, I like when you stay positive, but you repeat the positive in almost a passive aggressive way, it, it sets a tone where you can't get mad at me because I haven't said anything, but you know my intention, which ironically is a female way of communicating, which you'll see right here. Women want to do awesome stuff for you too, unless you use very direct language. <laughs> Then you're a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, okay, okay that, that addresses the issue of intent, which is what culture and society seems to have forgotten. That it's not the word you use, but what your intention is behind it. And so I'm giving women all the credit for intention, which they deserve. Women deserve, they're very, very good people in general. Um, so it's not an issue of intention. At this point, I'm trying to establish that I'm not judging a woman uh, for so that it, it allows a safe a safe environment where I can about to start saying some real some real truths <laughs> give me some examples so my wife and I are sitting on the couch and she's like it's really cold in here I was like I know <laughs> so I gave her that look like I get it I've been there <laughs> And then I went back to wondering why glue doesn't stick to the inside of the bottle. <laughs> well, I got some theories. Uh, maybe there's a coating. Maybe, maybe it needs a vacuum and it only reacts to air. But then you need it to be really sealed or else it gets like rock hard. Rock hard. <laughs> Not vacuum, but rock hard. Uh, Okay, that section of the glue is all about space and letting people think. I used to rush it and say, thinking about how glue doesn't stick to the inside of the bottle, and then I'd just be right into the next thing. That is a, a multi-level joke where you have to actually think, you have to give the question respect in order to laugh. Because it's silly and pedantic, or pedestrian, I don't know which word is right there, but um, and every day, and there really is no consequence to the answer of that. But it is interesting in a weird way, because you never thought about it. And then as you allow people into your mind of laugh, laughing to yourself just at rock hard, you're now revealing the simplistic nature of men that isn't mocking men, because the original question is interesting. But at the same time, it's revealing just, it's saying the tone of the uncomplexity of it. And out of the corner of my eye, my wife's like, <laughs> and the chattering gets pretty loud, but that's not her fault. She's cold. That's an involuntary reflex to cold. But it is annoying, so I turn the TV up to drown it out. I can't be distracted. Like, I've earned that laugh of drowning out the, the cold because I, I empathize first. I said, that's not her fault. That's an involuntary reflex to cold. So that gives me, it, it's my intention now. My intention of drowning her out with the television isn't, um, it isn't because I find her annoying. Uh, because I've, I've established that her intention isn't to be annoying. It's an involuntary muscle twitch to cold, but it is annoying me. But that's no longer a shot at her. So now we can relish in the laughter of it. And, it, and it's starting to have cathartic reflexes where people are now forgiving each other in their relationship. Because maybe when they did that thing that seemed so annoying, it wasn't about me. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to offer relief. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Eventually she gets up, gets a blanket, sits back down. In my mind, I'm proud of her. I'm like, wow, that's a really good move. She's smart. <laughs> and I go back to happiness, just thoughts. That's what I was feeling. What she was feeling was much different. What happened then for her? She started replaying that event over and over in her head, quietly, showing no nothing. It's all inside. And now she has a, she gets a theory, and then she time travels around her relationship, uh, collecting anecdotal evidence to fit her theory. Uh, it's called uh, it's called confirmation bias. It's literally a thing. So, and now she's debating whether or not she should even bring it up. You know, she's like, maybe I should just not bring it up. It's probably better for everybody. But I deserve to bring it up. You know, and this back and forth now is raising her heart rate. So eventually, an hour later, 
and I have no idea what she's talking about. She just, out of nowhere, goes, do you even give a shit about me? Okay. Okay, I'm now showing something that would easily offend women, which is that they're crazy. <laughs> but I'm showing the steps, and all those steps are so valid and so lived by women that they have to give it to me because I'm showing the struggle of like not sounding, you know, of, of that they want to, their intention is to be good and their intention is to not cause drama, but they also have self-esteem and you know, that wrestling nature is what allows that laugh. Cause I'm now at this point, if I just used a hacksaw that I can't achieve this laughter, it has to be through empathy. Cause when you dive deep enough with empathy, people, let you do it because they feel good that you understand what's going on in their head. And that's the only way to heal. And this is just one side. Wait till I do the men's side. I, I don't pull punches. I'm not on a team because the, the only victory is less war. All right, let's keep going. I have no idea. So I react the way all men will react with, with a face that's just like, Baby, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and that fuels the fire because that's one of her other theories. That she's like, you don't even care. You don't even know what you do. I don't. I care so little. I don't even know. I don't care. That's another theory that just got me for. So now I'm like, you sound crazy. You think that's crazy? You think that's crazy? Now you're you're yelling at each other and you don't know why. And there's no end. It's toxic. There's no way to solve it because you don't know what it is. And and. And it's, it's so bizarre because that's why if you're with a girl that you love and you like, and you're like, she's great, stay with her. Because there's nowhere to go. Like, they're all crazy. <laughs> like, they're all crazy. <laughs> okay, I just called all women crazy and they exploited with laughter. Why? Because I'm also reinforcing monogamy. Because, and I'm not lying. This is all real and they know it because that's how you make it in a marriage and in a relationship is you admit what you are. And I love um, the hero's journey, which is uh, Campbell, uh, writes all about the power of myth and stuff. And there's all these, the, the hero with a thousand faces. And right now I'm constructing myself as the hero that is now returning from uh, the quest and is ready to report to the people what he's learned. Because it my, so I have to establish that I've been through war to find the knowledge that I'm now ready to give. And that is not a lie. I have been through gender war and relationship war and love war and hell to, to get to where I am, which I still, me and Amy still have arguments, but the, 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 the real love comes from understanding. And this is about to, I now earned it. I now just said, Women are crazy and they said, thank you. Now, do I keep striking or do I pull back and give them something? Which is what I do, obviously. I give them the gift of, of knowing they're not crazy. That's the whole point. All right, listen. Like, the sooner you earn that, like, like, the, the more you can get on with your life. It's a, it's a young man's fallacy to think there are options. You know, I did. I'd be like, man, I like this girl. Oh, she's crazy. I gotta get another girl. And then I get with another girl, and I'm like, what are the odds? But this one's also like a mental patient. And then I get with another girl, and I'm like, what's going down here? These chicks are like legit crazy. And then I realized the definition of crazy is actually doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome, which is what I was doing. And then I realized that being a man isn't being with a ton of women, like in that Groundhog's Day type experience, because that's easy. It's easy. It, it is easier than just looking into the eyes of a mad woman and staying. You know? Just letting her just do, like, go insane and just don't move your feet. Because it passes over you. And then you get the knowledge that women aren't crazy. What it is, is they think an observation is in order. 
That's the whole problem. That's when the road splits in the woods. Right? When your girl says it's really cold in here, they expect you to at that point be like, what makes cold? And then you, you solve the riddle. I swear to God. They expect you. I swear to God. Okay. So um, at this point, I showed, I, I help men out because, or women, with, with a checkered past of being with a lot of people. You can, you can show that with the intention of trying to find a good person and you keep finding crazy, um, it, it makes you more likable. Like I've, I've extended that section for another minute where I'm like, and then, you know, woman after woman after woman, I make it a joke of like all the women. And then I, I, I show that by the literal definition of crazy, I was the one being crazy. And then that is, um, you know, it's powerful in all aspects of life to show mercy. When you have women it, it willing to let you call them crazy, they're admitting it. And you pull back and say, I'm actually the crazy one. Now you're off to the races. Now at this point, they're looking at me for the answer. Tell us the answer. Okay. To infer what the best route is at that point. Like an observation to a woman is an actionable order. To a man, that is not true. Like if a man says to another man, it's really cold in here. The other guy's like, I know, right? Seasons. It's like seasons. <laughs> like you're just commiserating about life. You know, but not a woman. And the, and the thing is, they're not doing it to trick us. This is the biggest kicker. They're doing it to be nice, to sound not bossy and bitchy. That's, their, that's one of their fears. I just don't want to sound bossy. It's... They speak in, t in subtext. They say nothing and it means everything. Does that make sense? That's how they talk to each other. You ever see women with each other? They do the same shit to each other. You know, like, like and men are flabbergasted. You know, like, you're, like a girl, you go to like a party or something and your buddy's wife is like, oh, it's so great you guys are here. You didn't bring wine? That's fine, we got plenty of it. Come on in. And your wife's like, she is such a fucking bitch. <laughs> and you're like, she said it's fine. They have wine. Like, I don't... Okay, now I'm, I'm using language that you wouldn't be able to use with a woman, but you can now, because all women know that that's true, that the most vicious misogyny can come from women that have, that have been attacked by another woman without the man even perceiving it. You see, the irony, however, is I'm enough female gendered. I'm probably 10% female gendered. I have enough knowledge of that way of communicating where I've been using these tricks the whole joke. Like when I was saying queer, direct, language, direct, tell us what you want, we'll do it. Direct, queer, what? that's passive aggression. I'm using a trick that women use in conversation to, to say something without saying anything. And that's what layers the joke where it's not just man's point of view from man with man language. You throw in a little bit of the other side and it allows you to really just get the genders just love, loving each other. All right, let's continue. <laughs> the thing, women have a lot more power than they realize. If you give us a direct order, we'll do it, because we want to. We want to feel like a man who protects you and makes you happy. That's why we're on the planet. And this world can make men feel pretty emasculated, you know? You know, it's like, well, no way, I got a read for you. Yeah. It's like, there's no more dragons, you know? And so if you make us feel like a man, we'll do anything. If you're like, hey, baby, I'm really cold. Will you give me a blanket? That's oh, good. You need me? <laughs> if I don't come back, I love you. And now you're on a mission. And it, it's even more powerful if you give us some encouragement. We're like, baby, you're so good at getting blankets. And, and now in your mind, you're like, she sees something in me. Maybe I didn't even know about myself. I guess I am good at getting blankets. Then you go to the blanket area. There's a lot of options now. You don't want to disappoint your queen. See, there's truth in that. And everyone's had that coach or that teacher that told them they were smart or fast. Even maybe if they didn't even deserve it. And you want to now reach for what they reach. And I think that a lot of privilege in the world is not what people think it is. Privilege to me is cultural, where 
Um, if you're from a culture with high expectations, usually you reach higher because you, do, you don't want to let the people down that believe you're better than you might even be at that moment. And that's a powerful thing. And if women know how to use that when directing men, they're more powerful. Like if you say like, if you literally look at someone like they are something better than they are, I'm telling you, they will try and be that because it opens a possibility. It, it lets them create an image of themselves in their head, even if it's a moment that now exists and they could be that person. And the fact I'm talking about getting a blanket is why it's funny because that's such a silly example. But isn't all of life silly in its own way? All right, let's get she sees you as a man. So you're like, what's the best one? I want to blow her fucking mind. <laughs> like, that one's too dead. That one, I'm pretty sure, is uh, it's covered in cum. Like, everyone's got a blanket. It's like, you don't let your nieces sleep with. Like, not that blanket. That was, that was from Marcos from that Camry trip and no one drank it. And then you see the right blanket. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. You're like Jason with his fleece. You know, you come back, you put it around your girl, you tuck it in, you take pride in that. But this is what we need, ladies, this is important. We need approval that the task has been completed. All right? Don't just sit there with a the blank at that point, because now we're in this constant state of agitation and insecurity. And we're like, Wait, should I get in the like, And then finally, you're just like, did I do good? And I was just like, yeah, you did good, baby. You're such a man. You're like, yes. And then, you know, Van Halen starts playing in your head. And, uh, and that's it. And that's all it is. There's no more. Like, there's no more to figure out with men. We want to make you happy. And if that was just the case, it'd be fine. But the opposite is also true. Women want to do good things for you. They're very thoughtful, selfless. They put others first. They're wonderful, warm, horny. They want to fuck you bad. <laughs> Unless you tell them to. Then they don't. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that needs that high voice. Then they don't. Because uh, that sells the joke. But that's another thing that... that it, it, it accomplishes a lot of good things. It, it, for one, shows that men aren't alone. That everybody's girl has turned them down. Including myself. You know, I'm in a power position. I, I'm on a stage. I'm lit. I have a microphone. People paid to see me. So there's assumptions that like, you know, maybe I just get unlimited pussy. That there's a that there's a end game. That like people in the right position, their wives never turn them down, which isn't true. And it also shows that men shouldn't be as aggressive. You know, you can play aggression games with someone if you sense that they want that. But demanding sex is a turnoff for women. Uh, you know, they can be in a mood where they want that, you know, a half an hour a month, but you can't bet on that. And when you give the space like this, it sounds on the surface like an, like, oh, my, dry, my dryer, like an idiot would think that this is misogynistic or sexist. And there's idiots. Trust me. This is why I am having an issue with the political correct people because they would say this is sexist when in fact I'm um, enforcing a very non-rapey state of mind for men with the reward being sex and I'm also establishing a better way to communicate so that's the irony of a lot of these progressive ideals is they actually reinforce the opposite of what they claim to do all right so it's <laughs> so true it's just facts you know, here's, a, here's, here's two scenarios. This is what you should do. If you come home and your girl's there, um, just be like, hey baby, I had a really bad day. You look amazing. I love you. Don't say one more word. Just find a window and look out the window. That space lets her fill in the blanks in a very positive way, more than you deserve. You know, emptiness is what makes them flourish for some fucking reason. So she's like, look at him. Look out that window. I wonder what he's thinking about. At this point, you're wondering who put the letter S in the word lisp. You can't say it without lisping if you have a lisp. Like, of all the letters, is that intentional? Yeah, dude, let's throw an S in there and let these fuckers struggle with it. <laughs> but don't say that out loud. 
say nothing. Because then that's when they start being like, oh, he works so hard. Look at him, look at that fine ass. And then, and then, and then they do something really thoughtful that you would never do for yourself. You know, it should be like, I'm gonna make him some hot cocoa. Like, I love hot cocoa. I would never even, I barely, like, I'm like, pants? Pants. Like, I, I don't think of doing something good for myself. But she's like, he loves hot chocolate. So she brings it over, she's like, here, baby, have some hot cocoa. We all have bad days. I love you. And I'm like, thank you. How do you know I like this? And she's like, because I pay attention. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what I'd do without you. And the next thing you know, you're inside of her. Right? And they're also holding a mug of hot cocoa. So it's a dicey situation. You want it to start just unleashing, but safety first. You know, you're an actual world hero. Okay, here's another scenario that's infinitely more probable. That never happens. I've never had sex with cocoa. That's a, that's a pipe dream. Okay, so you see what's happening here. Uh, it's important that I objectify myself. I don't know why, it just helps. Like when I say, ooh, look, look at that fine ass. Because then when I say I'm inside of her, it's like there's, there, I'm creating characters that are giving consent. Um, and I'm also showing that, that the absence of words sometimes in the right situation, like all the negativity that women put on you uh, with the blanket is now positive with the cocoa because with all that all that emotion and creativity that they will put in your backstory with why you didn't bring them a blanket uh, about you know you not loving them and whatnot now they're giving to you when you have a bad day when you set it up properly and so um and then there's you know I'm, I'm setting this scenario that's funny but the big laugh is that I say I've never even achieved this but it is theoretically possible all right now I'm gonna let this baby uh, just go to the end. I can't be quiet, myself included. I don't know how to do that. This one, this one is more common. You come home, you're like, hey baby, I had a bad day. Make me cocoa. <laughs> you feel that in the room? It's their instinct. You, you think that's my job to make the cocoa? And I'm like, damn right, it's your job. <laughs> you know what else is your job? And then you unzip. <laughs> You pull out your plastic penis. You say, it looks like someone's got a double shift tonight. So why don't you clock in? At that point, she'll take the cocoa. She'll burn your dick with it. Now you have no dick. You have no cocoa. You become your own snap episode. And women around the world go, that's what happens. Thank you. That works because it's true. And I can tag, I, every time I watch something I do, I, I think of all the other options that I've done or can do. You know, that's already a long bit. But you know, when I, you're like, you take out your flaccid penis in your ill-fitting pants. You know, because the, the joke is the irony of my confidence compared to a pathetic scene. And men have this ability of always being proud of their penis, even if it looks silly. And, but... My point of all of this is that men and women are fucking different. Whoa, that was time crazy. My dryer keeps buzzing. Yeah, men and women are different. Our genders are different. Everything about us is different. And these, these differences need to be mocked, uh, rejoiced, discussed, because that's the only way. These couples, I've gotten emails and tweets and Facebook messages of couples literally saying, thank you for everything. Like it makes you get along better if you acknowledge what we are. Now, of course there's crossovers. You know, my wife's more handy than me. I play piano and sometimes cry when I watch movies. But in general, you know, the curves are like this. There's crossover, but there also isn't. And that's why I care about the PC shit. Because if you take away gender, that joke doesn't exist. I can be sued by the government for that joke. Canada does it. 
So that's the only reason I give a shit. Sometimes people are like, oh, and everybody likes your male female stuff and piano and all the fun, goofy, big bear, feed the bear. I'm like, yeah. And if you like all that shit, know that you also need to like free speech. And you also need to like accepting differences in human beings, not repressing people, suppressing people, taking rights from people, all bad, right? Anybody should be allowed to be anything that they feasibly can do in the marketplace, you know? But in the end of the day, we're different. So thanks for listening to another episode of Why Didn't They Laugh? I'm your host, Owen Benjamin. Go to blueapron.com slash Owen for three free meals, free shipping, awesome food. My wife and I cook it together. We feed our little baby it. We uh, bond. Then sometimes I, I'm inside of her if I do the creme fraiche properly, the creme fraiche. And, um, and also support patreon.com slash WDTL if you want to donate to keep this thing moving. Uh, because I love doing it and I will never be on television because television is to de- divide people. D- these jokes don't end up on, on most networks. I mean, I'm not trying to be a dick, but that's clearly funnier than most stand-up jokes. They're like, ha, hey, I'm Aziz Ansari. I'm brown. White people are fucking assholes. Well, you know, Indians make more per capita than Caucasians in America because culture is more fucking important than race. Sorry for not being a racist. Um, you see a lot of that, a lot of like, we're all different. So let's get real different because that for some reason, division gets promoted and you see it with Fox and MSNBC and all these CNN and all this shit. It's, it's red team, blue team fucking hate each other and sell bullshit to people that they don't need. I'm selling catharsis and I'm selling, uh, laughter, which is what I got into this for. I, I didn't get in this to get rich. I like money. I like, uh, you know, security, uh, feeding my family. But I'm not, I want to see the crowd emotionally come. Like they have this come face. Like th- those laughs. Ah, you literally see them go, fuck yeah. You're like, they come. And I wouldn't trade that shit for anything. If I'm doing Madison Square Garden, but I got to act like a fucking asshole. No. Ah, ah, ah. No, no. I'm going to act like a man. And uh, I love you guys so much. And hugepianist.com for tour dates. I probably shouldn't have just randomly attacked people for no reason. I have that problem sometimes. Everyone's doing their thing. God bless everybody. I'm sure that dude's pretty funny on someone. I don't know why he gets under my skin. I think it's because of the racism push. I just, I really want, I really don't like racism. And, and everyone says white people can't say that. That's insane. As a World War II history major, somebody used to live in the Czech Republic. Someone who's had relatives, you know, put in gas chambers and shit. Were the Nazis not racist in 1928? If it's about power, this perceived power, which by the way, there is no racial hierarchy in America. We just had a black president for eight fucking years, guys. Ha ha ha. But even, even without that, even if white people do have all this power, even though the trailer parks say otherwise, but let's say they do. Um, even though the rhetoric also is that they're like white trash, redneck, you know, fucking Bible thumping, mouth breathing retards. Uh, let's say they do have all that power. Racism still racism. When Hitler and his, his butt fucking idiots, the, the Nazis were trying to take over Germany, they didn't have power. They're the underdogs. If you read the rise and fall of the third Reich, it reads almost like the mighty ducks. Uh, they were still racist. That whole, uh, you know, racial supremacy shit. Whether you have power or not, an ideology based on racial supremacy and racial division is racism. And until you fucking stop dividing people based on races, life is gonna suck. But life is good and life is beautiful. And thanks for sticking with me on, um, on this anal- analyzation. And I find that like more working class people and smart professionals like this stuff, people that don't have to work for a living, uh, like the trust fund kids, the liberals, the liberal elite, they usually don't like jokes like that because they have 91 genders. And I find, I I love science, big fan. And I found that um, there's something called speciation, where species keep splitting and splitting and splitting. It happened on the Galapagos Islands and all these places, something called birds of paradise. Where when a certain species is confronted with no natural predators, 
evolution is based not on survival, but on sexual procreation. So like you get these big plumes and these things that don't keep the animal alive, but it attracts mates because when you have no predators, you get to put all your calories into these big plumes and be different based on how your feathers look. You put one fucking raccoon on any of those islands, they're all dead because they didn't evolve to survive. Now, that's why I know for a fact this progressive PC shit will not last because you're not developing social skills for survival. You're developing these plumages and these infinite divisions because there's no fucking wolves on your island. I love you.